Hi everybody, this is Lara at PureElliotWave.com. I am working through my list of extra free analysis people have requested. Today I'm going to update my analysis of Zcash. That's how I say it. Yep, Zcash. Someone asked in comments on the YouTube channel, uh, where are the ticker symbols for the cryptocurrencies? I'm getting them from Yahoo Finance. So I've searched for Zcash here on Yahoo Finance. I'm just going to set my date parameters download it gives you with one click csv format that motive wave will accept file chart import data choose csv there it is in your downloads folder uncheck these if it's new data or you don't have that ticker symbol in your library already you'll go through a couple of extra quick little steps where you create it let's update this analysis it Primary 2's gotten lower. My uh, wave count for Zcash, it's a bit, a bit of a weird one. It started up quite high. December or October 2016, the high, 5,941. It launched with a bang and just then just kind of <laughs> collapsed, absolutely collapsed. The low here, $18.94. Wow. So this is not one I'm prepared to take a risk on buying but I'm analyzing it for you because someone wanted it so looks like uh, intermediate C could be an incomplete five wave impulse yeah that looks pretty good and I'd say five should move below the end of three to complete that yeah I think that looks pretty good I don't know that I'm going to spend too much more time on that have I got a daily chart mm, yeah I have what does this say? That looks like a pretty good third wave, and this looks like the middle of the third wave. Let's bring in MACD to help with the wave count. I'm in Ipialis today, and if you can tell from my voice, I've been sick. So we're just going to stop here, maybe for a couple of days to get a bit better before we continue. We've just had a nasty little cold bug. I still have to work too. That's a bit hard. I'll have to edit out all my coughing. <laughs> it's okay don't feel sorry for me I don't it happens and then when you get better you get better oh yeah that looks pretty good I'm rethinking how I'm going to do this list when I reopen it too guys I can't go back to everyone on the YouTube channel and in my membership says hey Lara can you analyze this and this and this for me and I get this huge list which then causes me anxiety because it's so big and it just takes so long to work through. And then I close it for a while and I do nothing for anyone. I'm going to have to manage that better. I think I'm going to have to, I don't know, have an, a weekly vote on what you want me to analyse for the following week. And I'll do up to five, but I'll probably do one or two most commonly. And I'll give you a list and you can vote for it, something like that. I don't know. I'm just going to have to rethink this because I can't go back to the way it was being done before. The YouTube channel's grown to a size now where there's so many people requesting extra stuff from me. I just don't have the time to do all of that for you. And I just don't like not saying, yes, I'm going to do it and then not being able to do it. Okay, I think I'm going to conclude that minor five needs to move below the end of three at 50.1629. Let's have a look at Fibonacci ratios in here. Oh, three is shorter than one. Okay, that's interesting. That means five is limited to no longer than three. One of the core Elliott wave rules for an impulse and intermediate C from the start to this end is a five wave impulse. It's labeled minor one, two, three, four and five is incomplete so I'm expecting this one to go lower one of the core rules says that three may not be the shortest look at the scale though this is a semi-log scale so although when you're looking at it three looks longer than one it's not in terms of price distance traveled and that's the metric we're using when I highlight these waves on motive wave this first number is the price point that the wave is anchored to. The second number in brackets is the length from beginning to end. Minor 1 is 221.6609. Minor 3 is 162.0109. So 3 is shorter than 1. It's a bit longer than 0.618, the length of 1. 
So there's no ratio between the two, but this means that 5 is limited to no longer than a quality of length with 3, so that 3 is not the shortest out of 1, 3 and 5. The rule states the third wave in an impulse may not be the shortest. It doesn't state, as some people misinterpret it, the third wave has to be the longest. That's absolutely not what it says. And that's one reason why I wrote my book, Pure Elliott Way. If you can get a download on my website, it's just $15. And I wrote it to be the definitive guide to learning and using Elliott Wave. And I've got a list of rules and guidelines there. And if you're learning to use Elliott Wave, I'd use that as a checklist for every structure you label. Go and look at the rules in my book or Preachers book or anyone else's book, or, well, mine or Preachers, I wouldn't actually recommend anyone else. I'm using Elliot's rules as laid out in Frost and Preachter. I have not rewritten any of those rules. I adhere to them very strictly. And there are a lot of people who have written other Elliot Wave work that rewrite those rules because thinks and feels, not data and facts. And I'm definitely going to go on data and facts. I'm not having any thinks or feels involved here. So use those rules as a checklist when you label a structure to make sure your Elliott Wave work is valid. If it's not valid, if it breaks the rules, it's got literally no predictive value. You're wasting your time. Don't bother. Adhere to the rules all the time. And if you want to rewrite the rules, do it based on a wealth of data and research. Not, oh, I think the market's changed and I think it should be this. No, that's not how it should be done. And in my experienced opinion, okay, rant over. Sorry, guys. This is why I wrote my book because a lot of people are misinterpreting the rules, and I feel like, felt like Frost and Prejudice book is great, and that's how I learned Elliott Wave, Frost and Prejudice Elliott Wave principle, that classic gold standard, but I just felt that it could have been a little bit clearer, and the rules just could have been written so that there was no interpretation or thinking required, it was just really, really obvious. I like to make things very clear and as simple as possible and as blatant and obvious as possible. Well, if the fifth wave was equal in length with the third, that would take it into negative price territory. So it's a little bit academic for this particular market, for this particular wave count, but I would expect the fifth wave to be quite a lot shorter. Okay, I'm going to put my target here on my weekly chart. So my Elliott Wave conclusion is that uh, fifth wave needs to end. It needs to move below the end of three. I would expect a low at least slightly below 50.1629. Doesn't have to be a close below that point. A new price extreme by any amount at any time frame would meet the expectation. And here's a target which I think may be too low, but that'll be my target. Let's take a look at technicals. Okay, off the slow here, here's a dragonfly doji on the weekly chart, the low 50.1629. This is the week beginning 10th of July. A little bit of a bounce here and then a bearish engulfing candlestick pattern, downward movement here. What about the daily chart level? Is there any indication that there's a low forming here? Mm, there's a piercing pattern here, morning doji star here, no bullish candlestick pattern here, bullish engulfing pattern, but now we've got downward movement, so that wasn't particularly useful. Here's a hanging man, and this looks like a almost a gravestone doji and a bearish engulfing pattern at this high. The slow back here, this is just a bullish piercing pattern. It's not the strongest bullish candlestick pattern. Did it have support from volume? It did. What about the weekly chart with that candlestick here, this one? Did this have support from volume? Yes, it did. Okay, so there's some candlestick patterns to suggest that this could be a sustainable low. What's volume doing up off that low? On the weekly chart, upward weeks have increasing volume. Downward weeks come with declining volume. So that would be bullish at the weekly chart level, at the daily chart level. Yep, stronger volume for upward sessions, particularly this session here, 9th of August, that's very strong. For the short term, the volume profile, a little bit bearish, volume is pushing price lower. Hmm. So, I don't know. It's not clear actually, on balance volume would have given a bearish signal here, it's moving lower with price. Let's just finish up with the daily. ADX is telling us there's a down, or almost telling us there's a downward trend. 
almost if it reaches 15 with the negative DX line above the positive that's the strongest signal ADX can give it's going to then tell us that at the daily chart level there's a new downward trend in a very early stage with a long way to go RSI in neutral territory uh, 14th of June close 64.248 and here the close 58 Price is closed lower and RSI is high. There's a little bit of bullish divergence. And here the close 53 for. So again, price is closed lower. RSI after reaching oversold is closing higher. I want to look at that at the weekly chart level though as well. No, RSI didn't reach oversold. Doesn't look like there's really any bullish divergence. Okay, so only at the daily chart level back there for that low. Okay. And what about money flow index? Uh, yep, there's some bullish divergence there, but it didn't reach oversold. Price is moving lower currently, and money flow is moving higher, so that's a little bit bullish. ATR declining as price falls. There's volatility to the upside for this market. Yeah, even with this B wave, ATR increased up to that high. What will it do up toward in this? This is a bull mark at the end of primary wave one. ATR increasing to the upside and declining to the downside. So the volatility for Zcash is to the upside. That's bullish. And Stochastics is oversold at the moment, but there may be a new downward trend. So it's almost at 15 for ADX. So I'd be reading RSI, not Stochastics. So if there is a new downward trend developing here, there's a long way to go before RSI reaches oversold. This one just isn't very clear. I don't like the Elliott wave count. The technicals tell us there could be a low in place here, but it's not very clear. It's not as clear as a lot of the other markets, cryptocurrencies I've looked at. I think this one hasn't found a low. I think it's going to go a little bit lower, but maybe not by much, and I think that target might be too low. As soon as we see a new low below 50.1629, then I'd be looking for positive divergence, bullish divergence between price and RSI. I'd be looking for ADX to reach extreme. I'd be looking for a bullish candlestick patterns. And where is next support? Next support, 25.447. So that's a little bit above my Elliott Wade target. Maybe that's all that it's going to get to, and that still might be optimistic to the downside. It may not get that low. That's it from me with a Zcash update for you. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. I hope to be able to give you maybe one more free analysis this week. It depends how the week goes with us crossing the border to Ecuador and continuing on that road trip down to get some more surf in, in Ecuador. Thank you.